Dispelling dangerous myths in health and wellness each and every Monday with Dr. Anthony G. Beck. Brought to you by Biohacker Labs. Warning, side effects may include more energy, deeper sleep, better memory, resistance to bullshit, and more cash in your wallet. Consult Dr. Beck with any questions. Hey everyone, it's Larry and Oksana here for another episode of Myth Busting Mondays. This time we're going to be covering the myth of counting calories. Is it effective? And I can't wait to dig into this because it's one that um, I find debated pretty heavily um, left and right with people that I talk to. Um, I mean, I actually held this belief to be uh, near and dear to my heart, but until uh, I spoke to you and you kind of cleared it up for us, um, you know, it's, it makes a lot more sense with what we're about to cover. So, yep, so I'm looking forward to what you got to bust today. <laughs> so let's just get started, Dr. Beck. Yep. Yeah, right on. Well, you know, that's the thing you guys have heard me talk about. The thing is, is calorie counting or the whole calories in versus calories out kind of thing if i have i've always said that it's my number one i'm talking about my you know agb's most wanted list of lies not only is it just a lie it's a damn lie and it's it's beyond a damn lie mm-hmm. and i know that's pretty pretty uh, strong and i don't think in in our short little myth busting monday we're going to end this debate uh forever However, I want to give you, you know, my super, you know, brief in, you know, way of looking at it that I talk with patients because I have to have this conversation um, in my office uh, quite often because it's so pervasive everywhere. So let's just get right into it. Let's do it. So the thing is, is that I, I understand that it's been around a long time the concept of calories. But what I try to do is really encourage people to understand the definition of terms so we can arrive at a balanced understanding. The whole concept of calories, most people aren't even really aware of what is a calorie. And it's simply put that it's the amount of heat or energy that we're going to need to perform work that's re- that was re- that at a temp, not a temp, just a temperature, but the atmospheric pressure of one atmosphere, you know, where you're standing, neutral, okay, just to simply raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So that's where that comes into play okay so we call it a kilocalorie or how many joules of energy that it produces but at the end of the day just know that that the definition is where we need to start because how we start measuring calories we're going to actually take a look at here how this actually comes forward in this next slide the thing is is in the lab or in science or things like that what we have to understand is is if you look at any particular food journal or anything like that Um, you're going to see a calorie amount. Well, again, that calorie amount was achieved by taking a specific sample. I don't care if it was a Brussels sprout, if it was an almond, or if it was a kidney bean, or it was a piece of chicken breast. What they do is they stick it in a machine like we see on the right here, okay, a calorimeter. And in essence, what they do is they take that sample of food, they stick it in there in a little, you know, sealed vessel, and they burn it inside surrounded by water and they take a look at the temperature so without getting to all the specifics that's really what they do to determine how many calories something has well the the vast majority of foodstuffs that we actually consume today is going off of old values that were established for a particular thing no one is constantly checking to see if today's banana has the same calories as 40 years ago or this particular orange grown in South America versus in Florida there's none of that right so we're going off of a lot of presumed amounts and that can really add up if you really subscribe to the whole calorie counting thing if it's off by just a few calories 10 to 20 and you eat 10 different items a day that's off by that 10 to 200 calories a day so if you subscribe to the damn lie of actually calories in versus calories out and you're off by 200 you you won't be losing x amount of weight that you might be thinking that you're going to well we're going to go into this a little bit more but i wanted people to understand that where the term what calories defined by and where it was first of all measured already sets up the flaw of the system and as you can see here and I can tell you there's there's no testament anywhere that a human body was ever stuck inside of one of these machines and lit on fire or they were like okay we're gonna stick you in this submerged tank and we're gonna have you live there for X amount of time and eat this particular food and see how you raise the temperature of this tank 
it just cannot be done in physics. It is just impossible. I'm going to call it out right now. Call me crazy or whatever you want because it's kind of scandalous. But at the end of the day, I make the statement that it is in physics and in true light of everything, impossible, literally not even possible in any way, shape, or form to measure the amount of calories accurately that the body's actually burning. Because even using your brain power, studying for a test, memorizing a song, thinking, being stressed or not, okay, it has nothing to do with, with how calories in, calories out go. You can't measure the amount of energy that the brain is, is burning because you can't measure the amount of thoughts a person is doing. You see what I'm saying? In other words, it can just never be quantified. So what you're saying is that um, there, there's a lot of inaccuracy within, within this theory in general, whether it be the dynamics of a plant, whether it's grown with more water, less water, the, the, you know, whether it's ripe, not ripe, etc., and then the different stuff going on within your body that determines whether or how the, those calories are going to be burned and like what's going on, whether you're stressed out or relaxed or you know, you got it. any other variety of uh, Yeah, so like on. a steak versus beef jerky. You take the same amount of weight and they're going to have different calories even though it was the same volume originally. You, just, it, you physically just cannot measure it accurately and much less it, we have no way of ever reproducing or measuring caloric burn in the human body it's just not possible so tick one is to think about the inaccuracy of what's going on within the body and the food that we're eating so okay let's go yep. that's the summation so moving on here a lot of fun because i really tell you man this is where it once you release this you know thought process is where you become free now I have had this conversation, I can't tell you how many times, in the uh, sports medicine exercise physiology world, both in conferences, uh, medical conferences, uh, classroom, professors, uh, and Facebook groups, okay? And they always want to bring up the laws of thermodynamics. Now, we're not going to get into that lessons today, but basically, the reason why so many people are blinded by this damn lie is because they're thinking that the body is a closed system, like that tank right we are not you can swallow something and it goes in and yes it comes out but not everything that you chew swallow down your inner tube and do the hooter to the tutor journey actually gets burned metabolized or absorbed so the body can actually use it it's just like cows cows will chew hay and they'll come out hay on the back end you could take that hay and you can burn it right it still has calories there's food that we eat you could swallow um, a cardboard box you can eat some corrugated you know paper. You could uh, eat truck tire rubber. Mm -hmm. Just because you swallow it does not mean it's going to be absorbed into the system, metabolized, and be available to burn calories. So what that means is, by default, calories in, calories out doesn't matter. But they'll say, well, calories in of things that we do absorb and metabolize. Well, hold on a minute. How are you going to be able to determine that? Right? How do you know the individuals and all the billions of people on the planet, billions, of how much of the corn is actually going to come out the end versus how much of that corn they're going to get. No one's going to measure it. You can't. No one's going to do that. So it doesn't violate the thermodynamic laws. That's why they call them laws. It's just that, and they do apply, it's just that there's no way of measuring their application within the human body, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the take up on that. The laws of thermodynamics do exist, but again, you're not doing it in a controlled beaker. We're talking about a human person. And each per does each person um, digest and metabolize things in a different way and absorb more or less calories depending on their own biology? Well, of course. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. Some people don't digest food. Some people have small, you know, SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Some people have celiac disease. Some people have ulcers. Some people have cancer. Some people have you know, acid reflux. N nothing is static state. So you can't apply these, these laws and rules to everybody the same. And if you can't, then that flaws the system of measure that's already by default flawed system of measure, mm -hmm. right? So that's why calories need to just completely come out, out of the vernacular when it comes to health and well-being. It really just doesn't matter. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. So definitely the scrape <laughs> off that one as well. Yeah. I calories mean, I know it's tough, man. Out. Some people still want to hold on to it, though, but let's keep moving here. <laughs> But, you know, the thing about it is, is most people can get the concept that you can't possibly think that if you ate 2,000 calories of hamburgers, french fries, Coca-Cola, and fried, you know, chicken, 
is going to be the same effect on weight and metabolism and health as 2,000 calories, okay, of carrots, cucumbers, you know, potatoes, mushrooms, and, and, and tomatoes. It's just not going to be the same. Why is that? Well, because food has different reactions in the body. There is an impact to our food, not only just physically. In other words, how it goes through. Like, in, you know, I mean, like if you if you chew up rice, it's going to be metabolized, making that journey from the hooter to the tutor. Other than say corn, even though they both might be a grain or a carbohydrate, right? It depends upon how much you chew it, how long you know, it stays in, in the stomach, and it makes that journey. What the health of the gut microbiome is, what the, the pancreas is producing in it and its enzymes, what the liver going to the gallbladder and it puts in there. There's so many variables. And the body's going to respond dynamically different to foods that are laden with chemicals and additives and colors and pro-inflammatory fats than they are of these ones that have phytochemicals and antioxidants and, and beta carotenes and all these lovely delicious things. And I'm not saying you can't have any of those. I'm just sticking it to the argument of the impact of food as reference to calories and counting them. There is a different response. That's why when someone's sick, it doesn't matter if you give them a thousand calories of, you know, McDonald's or a thousand calories of chicken noodle soup, right? We know we don't give unhealthy people or who are sick unhealthy food. Doesn't matter about the calories, right? Yeah. Well, the reason why this is so pervasive is because in parental nutrition in the hospitals, on a lot of programs, it just doesn't matter. They do believe. That's why it's so uh, detriment to believe this type of lie is because your little life depends on it. It's not a matter of just making sure you have plenty of calories. Mm -hmm. Right? And I mean, trying to consume 2,000 calories of just pure veggies, that is a lot of food. <laughs> That's a big challenge. And what, what's, the, what's the nutritional depth that you got for that? So in other words, if I just gave you 2,000 calories of rice versus 2,000 calories of spinach and spirulina and kelp, you're going to get way more nutrient density in the same amount of calories. That's why it doesn't matter about the damn amount of energy that it takes to burn it to raise the temperature of water measure. Mm -hmm. It's about what you get in exchange for the consumption of that fuel, right? Right? You need 2,000 two calories of spinach, you're going to be eating what? Like 32 cups of spinach, right? It's like three days worth of food. <laughs> oh man, right? So, I can see we can bust it in so many different directions, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So, let's keep going here. We'll talk all day on that one. What I also want people to understand is, is that food is not just fuel, it's information. There is a signaling mechanism. If you eat 100 calories of a ding dong, a ho ho, or marshmallow fluff, it's not going to be the same as if you ate 100 calories of any other healthful food. Okay, why? Because certain foods require hormonal responses, physiological responses and reflexes in metabolism. They take different things. If you, if you ate 100 calories of a cucumber or a pickle, it's not going to make your insulin be affected. If you eat 100 calories of Oreo cookies, it will. So this is where that all came into play. It's just it's just nuts. And speaking of information, that's the thing that we're going to see here coming pretty soon is this new mandate that we have to put the calories on every menu. So every uh, fast food place is going to put it on there and every restaurant has to put the calories. So this lie is going to get really out of control. So it's super important for us to see the fallacy of it because if you look at a menu and you think, well, I need to eat 2,000 calories or 2,200 calories a day because that's what the nutritional label says and oh, this cheesecake is only 400 and today I only ate 600 calories because I skipped lunch and I had a little breakfast, I had just a Pop-Tart and so I can definitely eat this cottage, you know, this uh, this New York cheesecake as my meal because it's about calories. Well, tell you what, if you start your day off with a Pop-Tart and you end it with a piece of cheesecake, how long do you think it's going to take for you to be well, right? But oh, but you're counting calories. We have to come away from it. Makes sense. Absolutely. So let's it's, keep going. Here. Yeah, it all makes sense. Like with every action <laughs> comes reaction, right? Yeah, the body ha is informed the body. by the stuff that we take. Yep. So I tell people, but, but people will ask. They'll go, well, why is it that people reduce calories and they still lose weight? Well, because those who become conscious of their diet do it not because of it, but in spite of it. In other words, when we start to be aware and count calories, we become more responsible in our foodstuffs. With that increase, you know, awareness and consciousness, then you have the factors of, of knowing. You go, well, I know I really do need to eat 
this particular vegetable salad or I need to have this particular piece of meat and, and be easy on this particular you know, amount of pasta. It's not because of reducing the calories, it's because they're becoming more cognizant of what they're consuming. It's not math, it's biology. There is not a way to, 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 to count it going in, much less what gets metabolized, much less the actual caloric things of the food that you're eating. You're assuming that the banana that you're eating is equal to the same banana that was measured back in the day to put into this calorie journal that everybody goes, oh, it's 120 calories. No. It could be off by grams. It could be off by ounces, right? Especially in this genetically modified world where we're actually, you know, today's apples are not the same as they were back in the day, right? Sure. But the calorie counting Bibles will always say apple or medium apple. Well, medium to one person is a lot different than now. I mean, them suckers are just massive these days. So people, they're, they're wondering, well, you know, well, I guess this, this calorie matches, but you can't look at that. So the math is flawed. The physiology is flawed because it's not math. It's biology. So let me throw this, this example at you. So the, the idea here is to have a calorie deficit at the end of the day, which, which equates to weight loss. Right? That's what they say. Right. Yeah. So if I'm eating really healthful food and um, I'm eating, say, you know, 5,000 calories of, of good food, good quality food, yep. and I should be consuming, you know, in theory, say, 1,000 or 1,500 calories to lose weight. Yeah. Right, but I ate five thousand of say salad, and it was a lot of salad, and I was eating yep. it all day long. Sure, um, would that create weight gain? Nope, because it doesn't matter about the caloric excess. It matters about the quality of the food and the information and the metabolic response to that food. I've actually issued that challenge. I said I'll give somebody ten grand if they eat a healthful, if they eat just healthful, if they eat the diet that I tell them to. We'll figure out that you're supposedly, you know, and this is another big lie: is the basal metabolic rate. Because remember, we can never measure that. It's all guesstimation, right? It's a formula. If, if you're supposed to eat 2,000 calories a day and a pound of fat is supposedly 3,500 calories, so if we eat, you, have you eat every day in excess of 3,500 calories, that means every single day yeah. you should gain a pound of weight. Uh -huh. Do it. I dare you. <laughs> eat, it, it, do it and see if every day you gain a pound of weight. If you don't, if you don't, if it misses even one day, that means it's off. It means it's a flawed thing. You just, you, you, if it doesn't fit, you must have quit. You can't do it, right? Yeah. So that's just it. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Same thing this. I have had tens of thousands of patients, and I guarantee you there's a big part of your audience, our audience here today that they've restricted calories and they, and they gained weight. They even they're like, well, I'm I'm doing the eight CG diet. I'm eating you know 500 calories a day, or I'm eating a thousand. So now I'm in a I'm in a 1500 calorie deficit every day. So every three days I should lose a pound. And they're going, I gained weight. How does that happen, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work in application. Clinically, after a couple of decades, I can tell you, it's just in 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 theory, um, it, it it seems to make sense, but it doesn't work because remember, it's not math, it's biology. It has to do with a lot more different things. Yeah. So you can eat healthful foods in excess and you won't gain weight. So usually when, uh, when these um, lies are perpetuated, there's usually some sort of monetary gain somewhere. Right? Well, of course. Think of it this way. If we can take away the, the instilled guilt that's been put on about people and made food the enemy, and we can say, hey, listen, you can eat, and you'll hear this in weight lossy people too, eat all the food you want. Right? And you can still lose weight. All you got to do is just sprinkle this crap on it or take this pill. Well, we know that doesn't work. But if you have people thinking that they need to eat 2,200 calories a day and they're like, well, before if I'm just – now if I put the, the calories on there and they, these, these, this donut is only 200 calories and I've only eaten 1,000 today, well, crap, I can eat another 2,000 calories worth of donuts. Mm. So it's actually a, a nefarious – it's not a conspiracy theory. It's fact. It's the food lobby and they're excellent at doing this. It's the reason why everything like – I mean like say, you know, Coca-Cola. I mean, they never just go, oh, hey, listen, here's the ingredients in Coke, and it tastes great. No, we have jingles, we have people, we have smiles. You know, soda commercials look very much like drug commercials. They always want to see how happy life is going to be if you take this poison, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So it's actually going to it, – it's a very neat marketing ploy to get people to actually increase their consumption. Yep. Yeah. Because, hey, it's only – they'll never say, it's 800 calories, but it's good. They don't do that. They go, it's only – 250 it's only they always they always you know marginalize and reduce it it's it's a, it's an interesting thing if you start thinking if you hear about how it's marketed to you the people actually give you those numbers mm -hmm. you'll you'll start to dial in on that quite a bit awesome. so there's a lot more money to be made by making people think that it's okay because the calories are low yeah 
And there's a good yep. documentary on this called Fed Up that everyone should watch. Right. Oh, man. It's fantastic. Yep. Boy, that'll open your eyes. It's good, mm-hmm. good stuff. My buddy Mark Hyman. Okay, so, you know, at the end of the day, guys, it really comes down to this. Remember, it's metabolism. And it metabolism and how you actually work with, utilize, disseminate, reconstitute, recycle, rebuild the body all needs an energy economy and it's way more complex than calories okay this is this is actually what metabolism actually looks like we even have to kind of give it the you know a b c d whatever vectoring like on a map back in the old days before we were stuck with our phones right so we can say okay class um uh, go to uh, B6 and then down in here we can actually see this is what these enzymes are going on or we need to go to J7 because it's so vast so this all this interconnectivity of systems is super important calorie counting omits the individual it's a flawed measure you know concept from the very beginning and I can tell you this I've listened to so many stories from so many fantastic patients over the years telling me that listen uh, I've seen people consume way more calories and they didn't gain a weight they didn't gain any weight I've not consumed calories and I still gain weight so calories is just the most nefarious thing that I've ever experienced in the whole nutritional world so we need to remember you're a lot more complex than calories mm-hmm. And this, it's all about individuality. Yeah, and this whole big thing seems daunting, but I think the bottom line that I'm understanding here is that all you got to do is eat quality food, and when you eat the quality food, things will just work, and it also depends on your own personal biology, so un- understanding that is really important. And when you combine you know, your own good biology and take measures to make sure it's on, uh, on point using various testing methods, and eating the right food and sleeping food. And, and exercise yeah. and sleeping and <laughs> moving the body you got yeah, it yeah all those That's things it. will equate to um, really good health weight loss and um, you can um, you can now stop counting calories you got it awesome dr free, Beck. free your mind and the rest will follow uh-huh So that's all we have for this episode of Myth Busting Mondays brought to you by Biohacker Labs. We're on a mission to open 1 million people's eyes to the real truth about health and optimal wellness. So please help us by sharing this podcast with family and friends. And together we can break free from all that noise and confusion and make the world a brighter place. Remember, each episode comes with a video and slides So make sure to head over to www.biohackerlabs.com forward slash podcasts to get them as well as our show notes and some free gifts. And subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcast to discover more dangerous health myths. We love hearing from you, so please share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you have a show suggestion or want us to bust a myth, please email it to us at mythbusting at biohackerlabs.com. See you all next week with a fresh mid-busting episode.